what struck me was <clears throat> when he said that he's been in, at these different states, and he's from he's from Maryland. Right. So you would think that they would have the best facilities of anybody in the country because, uh, you know, uh, you know, it, it, it it's right there, but yet he put praise on this library here. When this library was was being reconstructed, did you tell them what to do for 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 your for your your department? We had a lot of input in the genealogy center and how the actual space was laid out, and it was a progressive process, meaning we took a look at some what they called bubble diagrams to take a look at where different activities would typically happen together. We worked with the library administration literally on every aspect of the department. What we wanted to do, and I know it sounds really simple, Eric, but it, it, sometimes the best things are born out of really simple things. When people come here, what sets us apart, I believe, from Maryland, from the Hall of Records in Baltimore, from the National Archives in Washington, D.C., or other major libraries like Detroit and Chicago, what sets us apart, I really believe, is we focus on two really, really simple things. We know when, pe when people come here, um, they want to find something. They want some success. So they want to be successful. Um, sometimes it's not exactly what they came for, but they want to find something. They want to be successful. And secondly, they want to have an enjoyable time doing it. So if you can boil down our mantra into two words, it's fun and success. We want people to enjoy the family history experience, and we want them to be successful. Those two things will make them continue to do family history, whether they do it here or whether they do it somewhere else in the country or in the world. Um, we feel real passionate about the value of family history for an individual, for a family, uh, for a community. There's, uh, again, at the risk of sounding redundant, there's no better way to teach history. There's no better way for people to even have a sense of pride in themselves and their family and their culture than to do family history. There's just so many good values to it. And then if you layer in all the educational values, such as it teaches people how to research, how to write, how to do good email, how to have telephone conversations, it's a fantastic tool. So when we were building this department, we said, how can we bring all that together? How can we make this a uh, successful experience and an enjoyable experience? And that's how we got to, as our colleague said in, in the clip there, you know, it really does need to be on one floor. It all does need to be accessible. We don't need things that people have to call for so that it's not accessible to them. Um, we need staff around the department that will really help and guide and listen to the stories and kind of tell people the next best step and kind of listen to where they'd like to go with their research. You know, that, 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 that is pretty much a, a common theme <coughs> from the different people that were here. Mm -hmm. And, you know, each time, I'm not going to say that, that uh, you know, I, I interviewed some really young people who were doing research, but when I see some older ladies walk through the library, I just ask them, are you looking for the genealogy department? And, and they say yes, every time. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, it's gotten so uh, consistent that I have met people from other cities, and I know who they are, and they know mm -hmm. who I am. And when they come here, and I'm here, and, and um, I know they're here from Detroit, or, or from uh, Chicago, or, or from you know, just different places around here. But, um, you know, <coughs> during the summit, I spoke with one guy, uh, Ronald Higgins, mm -hmm. and he's very fascinating as he was sharing his story, you know, how did, you know, from, from your perspective, how did you guys meet? Well, it, Ron and I both attend a lot of national genealogy conferences. Each year there are two what they call national family history gatherings around the country. Uh, an organization called the Federation of Genealogical Societies hosts one, and there's an organization called the National Genealogical Society, and they, they move them all over the country. So I've seen Ron in Salt Lake, I've seen Ron in Austin, Texas, I've seen Ron uh, in the Carolinas. Uh, really, really bright gentleman. And it, the three of us, Marjorie Scholes, Ronald Higgins, and I, we were in the exhibit hall at one of these national conferences. And I think it was Marjorie and Ron were kind of joking with each other, you know, we ought to just have an African-American genealogy conference somewhere. And I just kind of jokingly said, I think that's a great idea. Why don't we do it in Fort Wayne? And it was like, ah, yeah, Fort Wayne, you guys got a good library. We could do it there. And it's like, wait a minute. We could really do this. <laughs> and Ron and Marjorie were really the driving force on organizing that 
Black Genealogy Summit and bringing the, the conference to Fort Wayne. And we had a great group here locally that worked with them to make that happen. Well, he, um, we're going to play this clip in two seconds. Um, he said the, basically the same thing, but he said that you were uh, the, 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 the uh, pivotal piece. Go ahead and run this clip, please, and we're going to come back here and talk some more. What is your, please? The Rollins, better known as Ron. Okay, and, and what is your involvement? I saw you, uh, I came in a little, little bit late to a meeting here this morning. What, what is your involvement here um, with the association today? I am the person that had a dream five years ago to have this type of affair take place. And so I brought it to my immediate group in Los Angeles, California, the California African American Genealogical Society, and put it to them. And they said, sounds like a good idea. So we have what they call the West Coast Summits of the groups that are on the West Coast, the genealog genealogical groups. So we started taking it to them when we had our annual get-togethers with the groups, which we call a summit also. And um, they decided that they'd start talking about it and putting it out to the different groups about doing this. And I told them about that, taking the international. Yes. Well, at first we were calling it the East Meet the West. And so they decided, no, let's don't do that. Let's call it the international and involved everybody. Because of the fact that there were, I had started numerous groups on the West Coast, and Jimmy Walker had started all of these OGS groups, you know, in the East and in the, in the Midwest and all of that. So he was an inspiration to me. And that's why I started getting groups started on, in the West Coast. And, like I say, five years ago I had this dream that we ought to get together because all of my people could not always go to their conferences and they really wasn't coming to the West Coast to our conferences, okay? So I said, well, let's do something where we all can get together in the middle. And my group started working on it and we got a chairperson and the one particular first chairperson, they backed out. but then. Another person, which is Algerie Wilson, decided, hey, I'll do this. And that was two years ago when we talked about it. We talked about it in Las Vegas at one of our conferences. And then up in Seattle, Washington, a little over a year ago at our conference, she, she decided she would take it over and get it going. So now this is your first international attempt? Yes, it is. So how did you choose Fort Wayne? <laughs> Through a lot of blessings. Okay, um, Marjorie Shows happens to be a member of the FGS and she's on the board, which is the Federation of Genealogical Societies. And Kurt Witcher, who is the person in charge of this library, she, they got to talking and she mentioned to him that we were thinking about having this particular type of conference. So he suggested to her let me take it back to our board and see what they say about having it here. So he got back to her and told her, yes, it's a go. You can have it here. So then that gave us a central point to work toward, and that was here at this library. Okay, we're back. <clears throat> you know, that vision is an awfully large vision to want to bring the genealogical groups together from the East and West. And then to have it here in Fort Wayne, uh, did at any point in time, did that seem to be too grandiose of an objective? To be honest, it, it really didn't. Um, if it had been our very first genealogical conference, um, perhaps, but we've actually sponsored four national genealogy conferences, hosted four national conferences before that date. So we felt very comfortable um, with the uh, new facilities here at the library with the greatly expanded Grand Wayne Center. Um, what we didn't know is if, as Ron did such a great job explaining, if all of the African American societies on the West Coast that participate in their summits and all of the East Coast societies that participate in their annual conferences, that they would say, yeah, let's try Fort Wayne as a venue for one big international conference. Um, so I, I wasn't at all ever concerned about it. We have a very, very active, as you know, a very, very active 
African African American Historical Society here in Fort Wayne. I knew we'd have a lot of support from the library, from the Grand Wayne Center, from the community. It was kind of getting the word out and, and letting people know, hey, if you've never been here before, you've got to come at least once in your life. And this is a beautiful, perfect time to come when there's so many experts in African American family history here to share their knowledge with you. And oh, by the way, we have this fantastic research facility that will extend hours on. We had, I think, 12 or 15 extra hours in addition to our normal open hours. It was so absolutely cool, Eric, on Sunday morning. We were open four hours before the library normally opens, and our place was packed, literally packed up there in the genealogy center with conference attendees who had stayed over after the end of the conference to get a little more research in. So it was, it, it came together really well. So it was, it, it was Ron's dream and the three of us talking in exhibit halls and you know, taking it back to our respective groups. But um, never really thought that it wouldn't happen. I was just so very pleased with how, how large it was and how successful it was. But it took a lot of work on a lot of people's part.